Hi, my name is Charlie Kim, and this is Opera for Educators with LA Opera. Welcome, opera fans. What you just heard was sublime music from Act Two, Scene One of Peleas et Melisande by Claude Debussy. My mission today is to walk you through analyzing an opera so that you as educators feel confident in helping the students appreciate the opera to its fullest. And who knows, maybe you'll learn to appreciate the opera a little more yourself. Surprise! You know more than you think you do. This painting. This painting. This painting. If so, then you have already seen the Impressionist style of painting. The Impressionist style of painting is defined by small, indefinite smears when seen up close, but from far away, these small, indefinite smears come together to form the impression of an image rather than trying to recreate a detailed, realistic version of a painting. This style of painting not only affected the French visual artists, but it defined French musical composition for many generations after. The music you are about to hear, you are already familiar with. Sounds from film scores and songs that evoke any feelings of magic, enchantment, turn the page. All of these are deeply rooted in the Impressionist musical tradition. The piece I will play for you now is from Claude Debussy's first book of images, and it is called Reflet dans l'eau, or Reflections on the Water. This piece is not from Peleas et Melisande. Uh, this book was written three years after Peleas et Melisande premiered. However, it is a very good example of Debussy's water music language. And you can also hear how Debussy uses the whole tone scale to evoke a sense of enchantment.
So Debussy was attracted to the characters in Metrolink's symbolist play, Peleas et Melisande. Uh, he was attracted to the way the characters had trouble articulating their most inner thoughts and feelings out loud to each other or to even themselves. This stumbling around and searching for words is, was to Debussy, far more realistic and actually human than the declamatory external style uh, that was all the rage at the time with the late German romantic composers Wagner and Strauss. This more realistic form of human interaction left Debussy the room he needed to compose the music that the characters on stage feel but cannot say out loud and this left us with the orchestration that accurately portrays the complex nuance of human interaction that bubbles just under the surface. Peleos was special for a lot of reasons but particularly because Peleos shifted the game from this outward declamatory style of expression backed up by the orchestra to a more internal, normalized form of expression by the characters on stage, but the orchestra expressing the deep feelings without the characters uh, being the wiser. This resulted in a shift away from set numbers like arias and choruses and finales to scenes that bled into each other musically and you couldn't tell where one scene begins and one ends. I will perform for you now the opening scene from Peleas et Melisande where we encounter Prince Golo in the forest where he happens upon a frightened, weeping Melisande by a pool of, you guessed it, water. The listener can hear right away that the music doesn't quite sound like song and melody and it sounds more like real-time conversation. A little bit less Shakespeare and a little bit more comme ça va, bien et tu? Oh, qui 
sia ti laborano. In a petit defile qui pleure de l'eau, elle ne me tombe pas, je ne vois pas son visage. Pourquoi pleurais-tu? N'ayez pas peur, vous n'avez rien à craindre. Pourquoi pleurez-vous ici, tout seul? Ne me touchez pas, ne me touchez pas. N'ayez pas peur, je ne vous ferai pas. Oh, vous êtes belle. Ne me touchez pas, ne me touchez pas. Jamais j'ai tout l'eau, je ne vous touche pas. Voyez, je resterai ici contre l'arbre. N'ayez pas peur. Now that we're in the mood. In a misty ancient setting, in a kingdom of shadows and memories called Almond, a 40-ish prince named Golo is out hunting the wild boar one day, as princes do, and gets lost. He comes across a frightened young woman by a spring, as you saw so vividly portrayed. Melisande, weeps and recoils even from the touch of his hand. She too is a princess, though far from home and uncertain of how she got there. Yet, in the wink of an eye, the two are married. Before Melisande has met the man she's destined to love, Gulo's half-brother, Peleas. And the love triangle guarantees a succession of jealousies, rhapsodies, and ultimately, tragedies. This is a very human story. No mythology, no long journeys, just humans and how they treat each other. The opera questions fate. In the end of the story, there is nobody to blame. They were bound to be attracted to each other no matter what, and no matter how much they tried not to be. In fact, they tried to stay aloof and they still ended up attracted to each other. The question is, are we in control? Are we at the whim of fate? A little both? Here are a few facts that are good to know before diving into the musical material of the opera. This opera is probably on the quieter side of most of the operas. The score only contains four fortissimos total. It might be a fun thing to listen for where the loud peaks of the music happen in the story and see how they correlate to the events. The text from Peleas and Melisande from Metterlink's play is untouched. W.C. only made cuts, but he did not change any of the text. And as a result, the text is prose versus rhyme and verse. So the words do not rhyme. And just to recap, uh, most of the musical building blocks of this piece are based in Impressionism and the Eastern scale. This is the normal scale. And this is the whole tone scale. Keep your ears open and see if you can hear the building blocks of Impressionist music in Peleas and Melisande while it's happening. 
And now, my favorite part of analyzing an opera, introducing the musical themes. To conclude today's seminar, I will perform for you the postlude from Act 3, Scene 1. In this scene, Prince Goulot has just caught Melisande and Peleas uh, having a moment with each other at night. Melisande is letting her hair down, brushing it from her balcony, and Peleas is ecstatically losing himself in her hair. Uh, interpret that as you will. Uh, after Goulot catches them, he says this could never happen again. And everybody parts ways and we are left with Melisande on stage, um, but you can tell Melisande is thinking about Peleas and you can tell because of the way the themes interact. So in this excerpt, you will hear Goulot's theme. Melisande's theme. and Peleas' theme. The beauty of Debussy's architecture is you can hear all three themes and how they work together. And even though Melisande is the only one on stage, you hear Peleas' music, symbolizing the fact that Melisande can't get Peleas out of her head even though she hasn't said anything. It's all in the music. I hope you feel more prepared to digest this music. Please enjoy Act 3, Scene 1, Postlude from Peleas and Melisande. Hey, opera fans, thank you so much for listening today. I hope you feel less intimidated and more prepared to bring this opera to your students because after all, opera is just a story set to music. See you at the opera.